Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me today for our ninth installment of the Birch Project's 10 training modules on supporting youth in schools and in the community, trainings for paraprofessionals and mentors. This module is titled Career Paths and Certifications. If you tuned into our previous modules, you will have some foundational information and understanding of tier one, two, and three interventions, including coping skills, and how they can be utilized as a mentor or paraprofessional. This module builds on the work and skills of paras and mentors. If you have not yet had the opportunity to check out the previous modules, we will do a brief review of some here, but I encourage you to complete those as well to make sure you are set up for success when considering future career paths. Before beginning with our con content, I would like to introduce the Birch Project, to those of you joining us for the first time for this module series. The Birch Project is the Behavioral Health Integrated Resources for, Child, for Children Project. Its mission is to provide professional development and resources for schools, as well as to strengthen coordination of behavioral health supports across school and community agencies. The Birch Project is led by faculty members from UMass Boston, UMass Amherst, and is sponsored by Boston Children's Hospital. For more information, please check out our website at umb.edu backslash Birch. My name is Bryce Scottron. I'm a third year graduate student from the School Psychology Program at UMass Boston. The majority of my research has involved improving the resilience of BIPOC students, and I'm excited to be here to present this module to you today. We would like to extend a huge thank you to the paraprofessionals and mentors who made these modules possible. They provided us with invaluable insights into the work that they do, which helped us develop the module you are about to view today. The learning objectives for this module are for participants to one, have a better understanding of occupations that utilize many of the skills present in paraprofessionals and mentors. Two, we aim to have participants gain understanding of some of the ba barriers to retaining paras and mentors. And three, we desire for participants to consider some factors when exploring a career path. In order to accomplish those learning objectives today, we will have six major segments of this module. First, we will learn about the barriers to retaining paraprofessionals and mentors. Next, we will go through the role of paraprofessionals and mentors and some additional career paths participants might want to consider. Following the role introduction of paras and mentors, as well as careers, we will take a look at how to find out more information on each of these career paths and factors to consider. As I mentioned before, I want to take a minute here to review some of the information that was covered in the previous module. The special education process is intricate and can be challenging to understand, especially for families. This is a reason why collaboration between school and community partners can be a big support for students and families. It is important to note that the special education process and mentoring assessment process are different. As you work through the module, please remember these aspects of Keith. Keith is a recent college graduate with a degree in psychology. He is a part-time paraprofessional. He enjoys working with kids, but is unsure what he wants to do long-term. He accepted a new job in sales because he is unhappy in his current role. As a paraprofessional, his duties vary from day to day. He is often frustrated because he does not feel very supported, and he is unsure whether he wants to remain in the field of education. Later in the presentation, you will be asked to apply some of the skills previously learned to help Keith. First, we will start with exploring the barriers to retaining paraprofessionals and mentors. As a reminder, 
We want to make sure our youth's basic needs, such as food and housing, are being met to make sure that is not getting in the way of their learning and friendships. Depending on your role and responsibilities at your school or agency, we recommend connecting with your supervisor to discuss supervision meeting times, crisis plans, and where to go if you encounter problems or have questions. If you have a concern about a child's safety, speak to your supervisor as soon as possible and never leave for the day without sharing your concern. Retaining paraprofessionals, youth mentors, and support staff in their positions can be difficult, and sometimes they will leave the education slash behavioral health field entirely. Many paras and mentors report not feeling respected in their roles. They report having to work multiple jobs. Some reported feeling burnt out due to being overstretched while working with some of the most challenging youth, bouncing from school to school, or even classroom to classroom, feeling a lack of support or guidance and limited opportunities for growth. This brings us to those who may be interested in remaining as a paraprofessional mentor. Despite the barriers, paras and mentors experience, they have an impact. Despite the barriers paras and mentors experience, they have an impact that often cannot be quantified. They can play the role of teacher, mentor, counselor, friend, model, advocate, and team member and collaborator. Their financial compensation often does not equal the responsibility and expectations they take on. They are the bridge that help youth excel in multiple environments. Thank you for all you do day in and day out for youth. Schools, agencies, and even families would not function as well without your efforts. Those paraprofessionals and mentors who are interested in seeking what other opportunities are available to individuals who have their skill set, please check out the following list. Paras and mentors have the skills to become licensed mental health counselors, teachers, applied behavior analysts, adjustment counselors, social workers, school counselors, or school psychologists. The next few slides gives you more information about each of these professions and how to learn more. Whether you are a paraprofessional, licensed mental health counselor, or school psychologist, the list of benefits of each profession is vast and can vary by role. Benefits include making a lasting impact on individuals, flexible work schedule, summers off, increasing patient life satisfaction, and building relationships. The next few slides give you more information about each of these professions and how to pursue this path. Here are some things to consider when looking into becoming a teacher. Licensure includes fulfilling college undergraduate and graduate requirements, passing assessments and licensure exam to demonstrate proficiency, multiple opportunities for practice in real life classrooms with feedback from other teaching professionals in the field. To find out more, there are a number of college programs for a teaching track, which include both on-campus and online classes. Some great teaching programs to consider can be found at UMass Boston, Framingham State, and Salem State University. Similar to teaching, when looking into becoming an adjustment counselor or social worker, licensure includes fulfilling college undergraduate and graduate requirements in either mental health counseling or social work, passing a licensure exam to demonstrate proficiency, complete multiple pre and post graduate hours of counseling practice. The practice time allows individuals a chance to work on their counseling skill. To find out more, there are a number of college programs for a counseling or social work track, which include both on-campus and online classes. Some great teaching programs include UMass Boston, 
Cambridge College, Salem State University, and American International College. There are, there are a few different ways you can become a school psychologist. There are specialist programs that generally take two to three years to complete or doctoral level programs, which usually take five to six years to complete. Licensure includes fulfilling college undergraduate and graduate requirements, passing a licensure exam to demonstrate proficiency, multiple opportunities for practice in schools with feedback from other counseling professionals in the field. To find out more, there are a number of college programs that offer counseling and social work degree tracks. Now, to find out more, there are a number of college programs that offer school psychologist degree tracks, which include both on-campus and online options. Some great programs include UMass Boston, William James College, Tufts University, UMass Amherst, and Northeastern University. School counselors differ from adjustment counselors and social workers in that they generally work with students on their academic and social needs in school. Whereas adjustment counselors and social workers focus on the social, emotional, behavioral, and mental health needs of students. However, they do require similar standards to become licensed school counselors. Licensure includes fulfilling college undergraduate and graduate degrees in either school counseling, mental health counseling, school psychology, or clinical psychology. Passing a licensure exam to demonstrate proficiency, completing a minimum number of practice hours counseling students in a school. The practice time allows individuals a chance to work on their counseling skills. To find out more, there are a number of college programs for a counseling or social work track, which include both on-campus and online classes. Some great teaching programs can be found at UMass Boston, Springfield College, Lesley University, BC, and BU. Licensed mental health counselors have a lot of flexibility in the opportunities afforded to them. LMHCs can work in schools as adjustment counselors or therapists in a clinic or private practice. I am an LMHC and I have had the privilege of working in each of the roles previously mentioned. Every day can be different as an LMHC. In order to be a licensed mental health counselor, one must complete college undergraduate and graduate requirements in a mental health counseling program. Following graduate degree completion, you must pass a licensure exam to demonstrate proficiency. In addition, throughout your graduate training and post-graduation, mental health counselors are expected to complete a number of practice hours counseling, whether in a school, hospital, or community setting. The practice opportunities are a great time to discover where you want to be when you graduate and develop your therapeutic approach and skills. To find out more, there are a number of college programs for a counseling or social work track, which include both on-campus and online classes. Some great counseling programs can be found at UMass Boston, Springfield College, Briggs Bridgewater State University, William James College, Lesley University, BC, and BU. A bi a applied behavior analysts or registered behavior technicians are unique professions in that they teach language, communication, social skills, daily living skills, and pre-academic skills to children with developmental delays, such as autism. As a BCBA or RBT, you will become an expert in behavior management and skill development. BCBAs and RBTs can work in multiple settings from schools, homes, and other community environments. Certification differs from the other professions in that following a high school diploma, one must complete a targeted training program and pass an exam 
to become a registered behavior technician. You can become an RBT quicker than any other profession previously mentioned. However, in order to become a board certified behavior analyst, one must complete a master's graduate level program, completing a minimum number of practice hours, which could be in numerous settings and passing a licensure exam to demonstrate proficiency. To find out more about becoming an RBT or BCBA, there are a number of college programs that offer opportunities to become one, such as William James College, UMass Boston, UMass Dartmouth, and Framingham State. Here is a list of the roles and responsibilities school counselors, psychologists, social workers and adjustment counselors, and nurses play within schools in which they are employed. Please take a few minutes to peruse the list. Identify some areas of interest and in which profession will allow you to do that work. So far, we have discussed some of the barriers and challenges paraprofessionals and mentors face in their work. Oftentimes, these barriers influence individuals to pursue industries outside of education and counseling. However, we wanted to make paraprofessionals and mentors aware that there are other opportunities within the field of education and counseling available to them if they are unhappy in their current role. The professions presented all require skills often found in paras and mentors. After all that information, you may be asking yourself, sounds great, but where do I go to find out more? Here are a list of organizations that you can find additional information about the occupations discussed in this module. Many of the links can be found on the resources slide of this module, or for you, you can Google the program and get their web link. When considering college programs, make sure their offered training program will allow you to become licensed following completed requirements, i.e. accredited programs. Things to consider and look out for. Your career is a big decision. It is not easy to find a job that you love doing every day. Oftentimes we think we know what we want and then realize you want more or something different. I am a prime example. I walked away from the sales and marketing industry to enter into the world of counseling and school psychology. The next slide are just a few things you should consider when making decisions about your career path. In looking at possible career options and opportunities, find out the following items. Understand you bring valued skills to all the fields we have mentioned in this presentation. Multiple opportunities are available to you because of your experiences dealing with complex cases. Be confident in knowing that you are wanted and needed in all areas of youth behavioral and mental health. What are some of the barriers to entering the field or obtaining licensure and certification? What kind of program is this? Will it allow me the opportunity to become a school psychologist, a BCBA, or a school counselor? It is okay that not every position will suit you or your needs. Recognize where you think your skills and interests will best fit. What populations do you want to work with? general or special education students, children, adolescents, or adults? Do you want to be in a school or another setting? We have presented a great deal of information and things for you to consider. However, if you can take anything away from this module, we hope it will be that paras and mentors are critical members in the development of youth. Paras and mentors are equipped with the skills to excel in multiple career paths should they choose to further explore it. Lastly, how do we address the barriers and challenges paras and mentors that prevent them from considering a career as a para or a mentor? Here are additional resources. Here are additional resources where you can find out more information 
about the professions presented in this module. If you are watching this module as a group or on your own, please take a few minutes now to go to one of the reference sites or the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education to learn more about different licenses in school settings. Follow the prompts on the slide and learn about the various occupations available to you and what it would take to obtain licensure for those roles. Here are the references used throughout this presentation today. Thank you for attending the ninth module. Please complete the evaluation form by visiting the link on this slide. We would love to hear your feedback. At our website, www.umb.edu backslash Birch, you can sign up for our subscription list to get more information on best practices related to supporting the behavioral health needs and well being of youth. We would love to hear from you. Please reach out to us with thoughts or questions. Thank you.